Okay, let's start. I notify my friends if they're online, but I'll be starting now. Good morning po to our media partners and to all our viewers live via Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to the DOHB COVID-19 Media Forum for September 29, 2021. To give us the latest updates on our COVID-19 uh, situation and response, here is our official spokesperson, Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verhe. Good morning, Yusek Reset. Yes, good afternoon, Lindsay. Good afternoon, na. <laughs> Nadang hapon po sa inyong lahat and welcome to our Beat COVID-19 Media Forum for this Wednesday, September 29. So bago po tayo mag-umpisa, gusto lang po namin magbigay ng update on our latest whole genome sequencing run conducted by the UP Philippine Genome Center and the UP National Institutes of Health. Out of the 748 sample sequence, a total of 633 cases are identified with either a variant of concern or P.3. There are 339 or 45.3% Delta variant cases detected, 186 or 24.9% Beta variant cases, and 98 or 13.1% Alpha variant cases, 9 or 1.2 percent are P.3 variant cases and 1 gamma variant case. Ang huling batch pong ito ay kasama sa retrospective samples from the months of April to June of 2021 para makatulong po sa epidemiologic and phylogenetic analysis and mapping na ginagawa po ng DOH with the Philippine Genome Center. Among the 633 cases, 609 are local cases. 17 are returning overseas Filipinos at 7 ang tinutukoy pa po kung local or kabilang siya sa returning overseas Filipino. Nasa 616 din po sa mga kasong ito ay gumaling na. 10 ang namatay, 5 ang active cases habang dalawang kaso naman ay kasalukuyang inaalam ang kanilang kalagayan. Muli pong pinapaalala ng kagawaran ng kalusugan na patuloy pa rin po tayo mag-ingat laban sa COVID-19. Sa ating walang sawa na pagsunod sa minimum public health standards gaya ng paggamit po ng face mask at face shield, palagi ang pag-uugas ng kamay at pagsasanitize ng mga bagay na madalas hawakan, pagdidistansya ng isang metro sa ibang tao, pagsisigurong may maayos na daluyan ng hangin sa loob ng inyong tahanan o sa iba pa niyong pinupuntahan, at agarang pag-isolate kung kayo ay makakaramdam ng kahit na anumang simptomas ng COVID-19 ay malaki ang maitutulong upang mapigilan po natin ang pagkakahawahawaan sa inyong tahanan o di kaya sa ating pamayanan. Makakatulong din po siyempre ang pagbabakuna upang makaiwas sa malalang COVID-19 na nagdudulot ng pagka-ospital o pagkamatay. Pinsay. Thank you, Yusek. I will now be going through the questions sent to us by our media partners. From Greg Gregorio, have we identified the reason behind the recent decline in the COVID-19 testing output in the country? And how are we addressing the matter as this affects the interpretation of trend of cases and our policy making? Uh, yes, uh, Greg. No, So we are currently still analyzing. Uh, we already have coordinated with the Metro Manila Development Authority 
uh, for us to be able to get complete submission specifically for this antigen test. Tinitignan po kasi natin yung ibang factors. No? One of the major factors factor that we are looking at would be the use of antigen tests in our communities in our homes and also in our laboratories. At ito po ang kailangan namin makalap na informasyon para makita po natin kung gaano ito nakaapekto dito sa testing outputs natin that we are having every day. Uh, some assumptions also based from our discussions with experts as well as with our other officials from our regions, yun pong hesitancy po ng mga tao ngayon to have themselves tested. And we are looking at two different uh, reasons for this no and we are going to have a rapid survey to check or validate kung tama po yung assumption namin ang una yung hesitancy po ng tao na magpa-test because they have that fear of getting extracted from their homes and being brought to a quarantine facility they fear that their families uh, wala pong kakainin kapag sila po ay na quarantine wala po silang pangtusto sa pang-araw-araw na kabuhayan pangalawa yun pong isang uh, kanilang uh, isang perception no na base rin po sa assumption namin na nakikita kasi na parang bumababa ang kaso so baka akala nila okay na na kung magkakasakit man ay parang sipon at ubo lang at hindi naman ito lalala so these are the assumptions that we are working on right now and we are going to do some form of rapid survey so that we can validate if this at all are true And then the second, uh, kami po ay nagaantay pa rin sa mga submission ng ating local governments, specifically para sa pilot implementation from the National Capital Region local government so that we can complete our analysis and see how it has affected our testing output for these past weeks. Thank you, Yusek. Um, from Lee Alvis, Yusek, do we have guidelines on the use of our vision? Uh, yung guidelines, Lee, as we have uh, discussed uh, last Monday, Uh, it is in the form of the joint memo circular. No? Itong joint memo circular kasi this is among eight agencies of government. So ngayon, nagra-route tayo for the signing of the different secretaries for each of these agencies. But definitely, as what we have given to you as information last Monday, yun po yung nakalagay sa revision. Nagagamitin na lang po ito sa mga high-risk areas under the three C's framework kung saan pinag-uusapan po natin ang closed spaces, ayun uh, pong merong probability of interacting and having close contacts and yung crowded spaces. So by saying that, meron po tayong specific yung indoor activities, especially in settings where there are crowding or there is that high exposure to risk or promotes close contacts among individuals. Uh, second, yung indoor and outdoor dining, except when they eat, of course. The third is the indoor and outdoor gatherings o yung crowded po yung setting. So pag nasa labas po tayo, hindi po tayo minamandato na mag-facial. Pero kapag pupunta kayo sa masyadong matataong lugar, amin pong inire-recommenda na kayo po ay gumamit pa rin ng facial. Indoor and outdoor activities that promotes close contacts pa rin, katulad ng pagkakasabi ko. At yung ibang activities not otherwise specified dun po sa ating sinasabing Tracy's framework. So ito po yung ilalagay, nakalagay sa joint memo circular and we're just waiting for the signature of the different secretaries for these eight agencies na meron. Thank you, Yusek. Um, from Sheila, kapag daw po ba na-include na natin yung uh, antigen tests in our bulletin, are we expecting the numbers to increase significantly? Uh, Sheila, yun nga yung pinag-aaralan natin. Ano? Ayaw namin magbigay muna sa inyo ng uh, confirmed or definite na answer because we have not seen the universe. Kumbaga, marami pong gumagamit pero hindi pa namin nakikita yung totality ng gano'ng kadami ang nagamit. Kasi meron po kaming inventaryo ng mga antigen tests na naipamigay po natin sa local governments to support ito pong ating active case finding sa pilot implementation and even in other areas of the country. Dahil nga may mga outbreak areas na po tayo so we have allowed the use of antigen tests. Ngayon, hindi pa ho bumabalik ang reports. What we only have would be the inventories of how much we have given them. Pero yung utilization, hindi pa ho namin na kukompleto. So we cannot give you a definite answer right now if it's going to provide a dent dun po sa ating testing capacity no? kung bakit bumaba ang RT-PCR, marami bang gumamit ng antigen. Ang isa pa hong tinitignan kasi natin, 
although local governments may direct line tayo, laboratories, we can also ask from them. no Hihingan natin sila. Pero yung gumagamit po sa mga private citizens natin, mga private events using also antigen testing, uh, private establishments, yun po din ang kailangan namin makala para maku makuha natin yung totality po nitong paggamit nito. So we are coordinating currently with specific agencies and units para makuha po natin yung kabuuan. Hindi naman natin sasabihin na kukumpletohin natin isa-isa. Makuha lang po namin yung trend as to the percentage so that we can see how it has affected our testing output. Thank you, Yusek, up from Red Mendoza. Ano po ang maipapayo ng Department of Health sa filing ng Certificate of Candidacy on October 1 to 8 as there is a huge possibility na baka maging super spreader event ito pag uh, nag-converge ang mga tao at nagkaroon ng mass gathering. Has the DOH talked to the COMELEC on enforcing these standards? Uh, meron naman po tayong ano, uh, direct coordination with the Commission on Elections. Actually, they always refer to us uh, when in terms no, uh, of this kind of events and we give them our recommendations. So our recommendations would still be to align with the current protocols of our uh, response to COVID-19. So kapag ka yung event po sa tingin natin will uh, produce crowding or gathering of people, no? uh, ito po yung mga high risk na scenarios natin, kami po ay yung nag-e-emphasize ng safety ng mga taong pupunta, ng mga taong magtatrabaho. And we recommend the same principles as we have been implementing in the past. Dapat yung symptom screening, dapat yung pong BIDA plus measures, dapat may proper ventilation. Yung apat dapat, dapat makita natin. Ano? So dapat may well-ventilated ang area, dapat may adequate na physical distance between and among people. And of course, we need to monitor for symptoms. So ito po lahat ay nakapaloob naman sa iba't ibang mga guidelines natin. And this should be able, uh, this should be uh, implemented by the Commission on Elections. Maganda nga may mga simulation po. No? Yung bago tayo mag-umpisa, maipakita sana at makapagkaroon ng pag-uusap no? uh, based on the simulation kung ano pa yung measures for us to improve para naman masiguro natin yung safety ng lahat ng tao sa darating na event na yan. Thank you, ma'am. Um, sinasabi po ng ilang health experts and former secretaries and the Philippine Medical Association na uh, dapat luwagan na raw ang restrictions based on the current level of vaccinations, which is now at around 70% in Manila, uh, which is also being pushed by um, Presidential Advisor Joey Concepcion. Ano po ang masasabi natin dito and will their suggestions matter in the discussions in the IA? Oh, well, uh, syempre, ano naman yan, ano? we always uh, consider all the recommendations coming from all ports, uh, points. No? So, alimbawa po, galing po sa mga former health secretaries, galing kay Secretary Joey Concepcion, we consider naman po lahat yan. Pero kailangan maintindihan din po ng ating mga kababayan at saka ng ating mga experts na meron po tayo mga pamantayan. We have metrics that we follow dito po sa ginagawa nating pilot implementation. And of course, vaccination coverage is part of that. Pero hindi lang po pagbabakuna ang tinitignan natin dito sa metrics natin kung tayo ay mas magluluwag o di kaya ay mas maghihigpet. Alam po natin that we look also at our healthcare system capacity. We look at the trend of cases also. And most importantly, ngayon nagpa-pilot tayo and shifting our policy, we look at the response of the local governments. If they were able to cope and if they were able to do strengthening of their PDITR plus response. So lahat po yan, kinokonsidera natin. Pero kailangan, titignan pa rin natin yung visa ng bakuna. No? Ang bakuna natin, napaka-visa po niyan for severe infections, again, severe infections and deaths. Pero alam natin na ang isang taong bakunado, maari pa rin pong magkasakit at maari pa rin pong makapanghawa. At iyan po ang ating iniiwasan, lalong-lalo na po na ang mga kaso naman po dito sa ating lugar ay hindi pa ganun bumababa ng mabilis at hindi pa rin po natin na decongest ng husto ang ating mga ospital. Thank you po, Yusek. Um, we have several related questions po with regard to the vaccination the general population from Caroline Lay and Sophia, paano po ang gagawing vaccination for the general population and do we have enough supply 
po by October for this. And uh, may susundin pa rin po bang prioritization if we open the vaccination to the general population. And if meron na daw pong recommendation po ang uh, uh, tag for this, ang may tag for this. Uh, actually, uh, ito naman pong uh, pronouncement ng ating uh, presidente ay nangyari lang ngayong linggong ito. No? Uh, it was uh, given, uh, I think, Monday night or yesterday. At ito po ay pag-uusapan pa syempre with our experts. Uh, gusto ko lang klaruhin what the general population is. In our prioritization framework, we have three sectors. No? Yung sector A, sector B, and sector C. Yung sector A po, yan po yung mga vulnerable natin at saka yung mga priority populations natin because they are the ones most at risk of getting infected or getting hospitalized. Uh, pagkatapos po nitong A1 to A5 ng letter A natin, uh, meron na po tayong letter B and letter C. Ang letter B po, meron pa rin po tayong mga ibang priorities, yung next to the letter A. Sa letter B, you'd find yung other po na mga workers natin na hindi nakasama as frontline essential dun sa A4. Nasa letter B po siya. Nasa letter B din po yung pong iba pa po nating mga uh, official no ng iba't ibang mga opisina na hindi nakasama rin po sa letter A sector natin or priorities natin. Dito sa letter C, dyan po pumapasok yung the rest of the population. So if we look at this and the pronouncement of our president is for us to start vaccinating. Lagi naman po tayo, no? of course, uh, yan naman po ang ating goal lahat-lahat that we eventually um, vaccinate the rest of the population or the rest of the adult population. So pag pinag-usapan po natin ang priorities natin and this population that is being referred to, this is the adult population. So ito pong adult population, lahat naman po ito, 18 and above, they are already okay to be vac vaccinated. No? Kaya lang may prioritization tayo. So ang sabi po ng ating vaccine cluster, from October to December, we are going to expect about 114 million doses of vaccines. So ito pong 114 million na ito, ito po ang tinataya natin na maari na po natin buksan sa ibang sektor. So ito po ang pag-uusapan ngayon ng ating mga eksperto that with these incoming vaccines and the percentage of accomplishment for this A sector na nabakunahan na natin, yan po ang ating pagdidiskusyonan with them. We will try to weigh if most of the vulnerable population have already been vaccinated. Kailangan na po nating tignan din yung metric natin for vaccination coverage para mas maging um, mahikayat ang ating local governments na makapagpapuna pa ng mas madami pag dumating ang supplies, gagawin na ho siguro nating karagdagang metric yan para makita natin if we can really slowly open up the economy already. So this will still be discussed uh, with our experts and the guidelines for which for this no will be issued maybe by the following week uh, from this week. Uh, Pag-uusapan lang po muna natin. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, from Sofia Tomok, from Sofia Tomok Cruz again. May we get an update on exactly how many Sinovac doses the government has purchased so far? A few months ago, we understand that the government said it signed a deal for 25 million doses and was negotiating for 10 million more. While well, latest figure showed 39 million doses have arrived. Where uh, where were funds sourced for the rest of the doses not donated by China and not part of the funding for the first 25 million doses? Uh, yes, Sophia. No? So actually, this is a question that can be best uh, responded to by Secretary Galvez as uh, he is the one uh, answering questions for negotiations. But just to give uh, everybody information, as of September 27, the country already has received 66 point. 6 million doses no, of vaccines and among these 66 million, 39 million is Sinovac. So kailangan lang po natin talagang uh, makahingi ng sagot kay Secretary Galvez. I cannot answer that question. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, from Aiko Miguel, what can the DOH po uh, say sa sinabi ni Rep. Garina mas marami ang kaso ng breakthrough infections kaysa sa actual data na nire-report ng uh, department? Uh, yes, no. So, tama naman po na sinasabi ni Secretary, uh, ni former Secretary Garin, ni Congresswoman Garin, 
yun pong mababa ang pagkaka-report. Kagabi po sa Congress hearing, yung data na pinakita natin, these are coming from the, kung maaalala nyo yung system na beams. Uh, ito po yung ginagamit, uh, VG flow, I'm sorry, VG flow na ginagamit ng Food and Drug Administration for the reported reactions or adverse events following immunization uh, sa pagbabakuna. So ito pong AEFI reporting na ito, FDA po ang nagmomonitor nitong mga reactions na ito na isinusumite dito sa VG flow na data system natin. Unfortunately, and we agree with sec uh, former Secretary Garin, underreported talaga. So we are encouraging our local governments, our vaccination sites na dapat na monitor po natin yung mga nababakunahan natin so that we can be able to get this kind of information, this breakthrough infection so that we can report it to this system, the VG flow or di kaya makapag-report kayo sa regional offices namin so that we can get it. As what we have mentioned last night as a response Meron naman po kami nakakalap na datos uh, for these breakthrough infections. Our hospitals are helping us. They give us information regarding these breakthrough infections among our healthcare workers. And we even did a small study on this and the Philippine General Hospital doing a big study on this. But we still need information coming from our communities. And this is where our local governments, vaccination centers, will play a big role and we are encouraging and requesting from all of you. Please submit the data. Uh, meron naman po kami na ipakalap na na information at uh, instruction para dito. Sana po makapag-submit para makompleto rin natin ang datos natin regarding these breakthrough infections. Oh, thank you, Yusek. Again, from ICO, the Philippines ranked last among 53 countries in the COVID-19 resilience ranking of Bloomberg published on September 28th. What is the reaction of the DOH on this and what can government do to improve the country's COVID-19 resilience? Uh, yes, I can. No? So uh, we have uh, had this before, uh, if you remember, and you've asked DOH uh, this question also. And uh, ang metrics po nitong uh, pamantayan na ito, uh, una, vaccination. Second, yung safely opening of the economy. And third, yun pong lessening of COVID-19 cases and deaths. So bukas po tayo lagi no? dito sa mga ganitong klaseng mga surveys, sa mga ganitong klase mga studies and analysis. And actually, this kind of uh, analysis gives us more direction in how we do our response. So sa ngayon, pag tinignan po natin, nakakapag-improve naman na po tayo. If you can see, our vaccination coverage has tremendously improved, no? Uh, from the time that we started on. Uh, second, ito pong lessening of cases and deaths, it's not just unique for the country. No? All countries in the world are experiencing this uh, cycle kung saan tataas, bababa ang mga kaso, uh, magkakaroon ng uh, breakthrough infections, uh, magkakaroon ng peak in cases, and then later on going down. So these are all being experienced and we are trying to learn day by day because the situation is really evolving. As to the safe reopening of the economy, that's the whole, that's the main objective while we did the shift in policy. Because we saw that uh, kapag ka dun tayo sa previous natin na ginagawa, yung safe reopening na economy, baka hindi natin ma-achieve in the coming months. Kaya sabi natin, since mukhang hindi na effective for us itong larger community quarantine classifications, let's shift policy. This would now benefit both health and the economy. So sana magawa po natin ng tama itong pilot implementation so that eventually we can safely open up our economy. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, from Leigh Alvis, what is the DOH guidance if a person who was positive on antigen test dies before um, uh, RT-PCR? Ang sabi daw po ng crematorium, ang nilalagay nila ay severe pneumonia. Is this correct po ma'am? Uh, yes, Lay. No? So, Lay, hindi crematorium ang nagbibigay at naglalagay dapat sa death certificate. Uh, yung death certificate is an official document. Uh, this gives you the registration no? at tinatala dyan kung ano yung naging cause of death. Ang pwede lang gumawa niyan, base sa batas natin, ay yung appropriate medical officer na tumingin dun sa pasyente bago siya namatay. O di kaya kapag talagang walang nakapag-attend nung namatay siya, ito po ay naka-designate doon po sa local health officer nila. 
So the crematorium cannot fill out the death certificate. So kapag ho tayo ay mayroong mga suspect cases o di kaya mga tao na antigen test po ang ginawa at nagpositibo sila sa antigen, kailangan natin balikan yung protocol. If you use the antigen in an outbreak setting or for people who are symptomatic or close contacts, a positive antigen test is considered a confirmed positive case of COVID-19. Nagre-repeat RT-PCR lang po tayo to confirm kapag negative ang antigen test. So for this case, because we do not have any history, if they had symptoms or if close contact sila, positive po yung antigen niya to err on the side of caution. We consider them as positive already. They should be remitted immediately within 12 hours and treated as a confirmed positive case. Thank you, Sec. Um, from Carolyn Po, a health officer in Dinagat Island said that they were not given a support facility from national government for isolation and were not consulted whenever IETF creates a decision kulang daw po sa health facility at mga health workers. Uh, may mga namamatay sa bahay dahil hindi na nakakaabot sa ospital. Mahal din daw po ang uh, naibibigay sa kanila na PPE. Bakit daw po may disparity pa rin sa tulong na nakakarating sa mga probinsya hanggang ngayon? Wala po tayong disparity sa, uh, in terms of uh, augmentation or support uh, to all of the provinces here in the country. Meron po tayong mga prosesong sinusunod uh, ukol po dito sa mga ginagawa natin mga protocols. Uh, Unang-una, yun pong pagkukonsulta sa kanya uh, sa Dinagat Islands, uh, sa kanilang probinsya kapag nagkakaroon ng desisyon ng IATF, I think uh, they should be able to coordinate with their regional IATF. Dahil kapag may desisyon po ang ating national government through the IATF, all local governments have that right to appeal for these decisions that are being made by the IATF. They are being informed of the initial discussion and initial recommendation. And then they can appeal if they see na hindi po according dun sa kanilang sitwasyon ngayon, yung magiging decision ng IATF but they have to submit some form of documents to prove na ito po yung case nila and they can counter propose. So hindi po uh, natin masasabi no na hindi sila nakokonsulta because they are all being informed whenever there is a decision by the IATF. Nga, ngayon when it comes to resources, meron pong nakalaan na pera uh, doon po sa ating budget uh, na binigay no bayanihan to budget kung saan meron hong construction of these temporary treatment and monitoring facilities across specific areas in the country kung saan kasama po dyan ang Dinagat Island. So kailangan lang po natin uh, matignan kung ano na po ang status no nito pong mga nakapropose dito uh, baka po nagkakaroon pa lang ng submission of documents kaya hindi pa nauumpisahan. But nevertheless, kailangan din po local governments hanggang hindi pa po tayo nabibigyan ng ganitong assistance, let's try to see what we can do also. Maybe we can utilize some buildings or schools na naandyan sa inyong lugar, lugar na we can repurpose para po may isolation area tayo. And as to the number of uh, ito pong mga deployment natin, yung mga healthcare workers, uh, base po sa report namin, we were able to deploy already five doctors to the barrios sa limang munisipyo ng Dinagat Islands. No? So kung sakasakali po na kailangan pa ng additional, they can just communicate it to us uh, dito po sa central office para sila po ay mabigyan ng karampatang tulong. They can always work with the regional office from the DOH because we always provide assistance to our local governments through our regional offices. Thank you, Yusek. Um, additional po from Caroline. Kulang din daw po ang mga gamot for hypertension at iba pang maintenance um, medicine na pinapadala ng DOH main office sa provincial offices. May we have uh, the DOH side on this? Uh, yes, Caroline. Uh, alam nyo po ang atin pong uh, mga gamot. Uh, Unang-una, hindi po primary mandate ng Department of Health para bumili ng gamot. Uh, para sa mga sakit. Meron lang po tayo mga specific na mga batas na nagsasaad na DOH will provide. Meron din po tayong tinitignan na pag sinabi natin na mas magiging 
efficient ang government kung Department of Health will procure for these specific drugs. For example, TB drugs, HIV drugs, yung mga major cancer drugs, yung mga major programs po natin. But aside from that, meron po ring responsibilidad ang local governments para bibili rin po sila ng mga karagdagang gamot na hindi na maibibigay ng national government. Uh, Unang-una na po, ito pong mga gamot for maintenance medications for non-communicable diseases. Bumibili po tayo pero ang binibili lang po natin, hindi po sukat yon para ma-maintain natin or ma-sustain natin ang gamutan ng ating mga kababayan dyan sa kanilang mga specific jurisdiction. So kailangan kahit nagbibigay ang DOH, makakabili rin po ng counterpart ang local government para po sa kanilang mga constituents. So that is the uh, expectation po that local governments also uh, will have their share in the procurement para po mabigyan po ng karampatang gamot ang ating mga kababayan. Thank you for your sec. Uh, from Patricia Denise Chu. Pahabol din po, recently tumataas ang percentage ng asymptomatic cases based on the case bulletin. What is the explanation for this po and is it because more people are getting vaccinated? Oh, well, that is one of the assumptions, Patricia, no? pero kailangan binibigyan natin yan ng ebidensya para makonfirm natin yan sa public na from, uh, you know, uh, we are seeing a number of mild and asymptomatic tumataas dahil marami nang nababakunahan. So pinag-aaralan natin yan ngayon, Patricia, pero ang kay, may masasabi lang kami ngayon na because number of cases are increasing and therefore tumataas din itong mga kaso natin na merong mild and asymptomatic cases. And tama ka, nakita naman natin yan na mas tumaas ng husto no, itong asymptomatic uh, cases natin. Pinag-aaralan natin yan ngayon and we would like to also see if uh, yun pong mga paggamit natin ng ibang methods din ng pag-test have an effect no, on this uh, increasing number of mild and asymptomatic. But our number one assumption would be the vaccines are working for all of us. no. But again, Evidence should be there, so we are now analyzing. Thank you. Thank you for you, Seg. Um, I will now be going through the questions sent through our Zoom chat box from Catherine Gonzalez. You said, Bale, ilan na daw po ang total number of cases per variant of concern with the additional detected cases? Uh, total number of Delta now is 3,366. Ang total number of Gamma variant cases is 3. Total number of alpha variant cases is 2,559. The total number of beta variant cases, 2,920. And the total number of P.3 cases is now 461. Thank you, ma'am. From Greg Gregorio, kasama na po ba sa mababakunahan na sa uh, pediatric vaccination ang COVID-19, ang COVID survivors na aging uh, 12 to 17? Meron po tayong listahan, ano, Greg? We have a list coming from the Philippine Infe uh, Pediatric Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines, PIDSP. Uh, ito pong listahan ng comorbids na tinatawag na i-include ito sa bakunahan ng 12 to 17. Uh, yan po muna ang susundin natin. So for these COVID survivors, hindi po sila kasama pa dito po sa ating mga nakalista na mga comorbidities na kasama for this uh, 12 to 17 vaccination. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, from Claudette, again, uh, yung mga students po ba na sasali sa pilot implementation of the face-to-face -face classes, i-recommend ba ng DOH na mabakunahan bago makapag-participate? Uh, Claudette, ang isasali natin sa face-to-face -face yung mga kinder to grade 3. Wala pa po tayong emergency authority for this specific sector or age group uh, among children. Ang atin lang EUA na meron ngayon para sa mga kabataan is EUA for Pfizer and Moderna for 12 to 17 years old. Although meron ho tayong isang sector ng age group dyan sa isasali sa face-to-face, -face, yun pong mga high school na meron po silang application uh, dun sa mga kanilang mga uh, or skills, no strengthening dun sa ginagawa nila sa school na isasali natin, kakaunti lang naman sila, pero hindi po yan prerequisite para matuloy ang face-to-face -face classes. Ang kondisyon po ng ating mga experts for the face-to-face -face is to encourage all of those teachers and non-teaching personnel na sasali dito sa face-to-face -face classes na dapat bakunada po sila. 
Yusek from Laratan, CNN. What's the decision of the DOH on the next alert level for Metro Manila? The current alert level four will um, end tomorrow. Yeah, we have an IATF tomorrow and it's going to be discussed there. May recommendations po ang DOH at saka yung data analytics team. Meron din pong technical working group meeting this afternoon kung saan ito po ay pag-uusapan na among the technical offices of the different agencies. And tomorrow, mapepresent na po sa IATF. Antayin po natin yung desisyon ng interagency task force. Thank you, Yusek. A related question po dito. Related to the LGUs PDITR response as part of assessing the pilot run, can uh, do we have the data po on the detection and isolation timeframes of local government units in the NCR during the pilot run of the localized lockdown system? And also, can you explain to us what will happen during the period after the pilot run ends tomorrow and uh, government decides on whether to implement the new quarantine system to the rest of the country? Will it be status quo until the decision is made? Unang-una uh, -una yung detection to isolation ina analyze pa. Kailangan natin maintindihan, hindi pa ganun kahaba yung panahon uh, para makakita tayo uh, ng enough no? na na effect nitong mga ginawa nating shift in policy. So pinag-aaralan natin, nagaantay pa rin po tayo ng submission coming from the local governments nitong mga iba't ibang indicators na nasa template po natin na kailangan po nilang isubmit sa atin so that we can complete our analysis. Ang atin pong desisyon para dito sa whether we extend the pilot, whether we roll out to the rest of the country will rest with the IATF. Kaya bukas po aantayin natin. So while we await for the decision, of course, lagi naman pong status quo. Pero bukas naman po ay mag-uusap na po ang IATF. It's just September 30 tomorrow. So we still have time before the October 1 deadline. Thank you, ma'am. Um, from Lee, my clarification lang daw po regarding yung uh, vaccination of the general population. Ang akala daw po kasi ng iba ay basta... Uh, 12 years old pataas ay mababakunahan na hindi po pala ganito and may susundin pa rin po bang um, prioritization? Uh, yes, Lay, no So gusto ko lang hong ipaalam sa ating mga kababayan na nagbigay naman po ang ating presidente ng ganitong announcement that we will be vaccinating the general population. Pero kailangan natin intindihin din po na Oo, babakunahan na po natin. Pero this will depend on a number of factors. Unang-una, yung supplies. Pag dumating na po by October to December itong sinasabing committed 100 plus million supplies, definitely, hindi na natin kailangan mag-prioritize because supplies are there already. Pero kailangan pag-usapan natin because prioritization is just for the adult population. Yun pong mga children, it's a special population for us because we need to ensure that really safe tong mga bakunang to para sa kanila at saka ito naman po ay may quality no sa sinasabit na bigyan ng EUA but what would be most important for us right now is to look at those unvaccinated pa na maaring makuha nung 12 to 17 years old population natin yung para sa kanila sila po yung mas vulnerable to deaths and to severe diseases ayan na pagkasunduan po at nairecommend ng ating eksperto Unahin muna natin yung mga may comorbidities na mga bata na mas vulnerable po sa sakit na ito. Kaya nagbigay po ng listahan ng ating mga eksperto, mauuna muna po sila at pag nakatapos po ta tayo sa kanila at tayo po ay nakasiguro na ng mas marami pa rin supplies, of course, susunod din po yan at makakasama din sa ginagawa nating rollout among the general population. Doon naman po sa general population, katulad ng sabi ko po kanina, we have A, B, and C. Yung A po, sinisiguro natin sa na ito ang pinag-umpisahan natin because they are the most vulnerable. So even though we expand to the rest of the population as supplies come in, kailangan yung priorities pa rin po natin ay naandon. Kumpletohin A1, A2, and A3, the most important sectors in terms of severe diseases and deaths. So yun po yung gagawin natin sa ngayon. Sa ngayon, ang mga kapataan, yun muna pong may mga sakit or comorbidities, yung listahan ilalabas po natin through the guidelines coming from the vaccine cluster. Thank you, Yusek. Yusek, clarification po with regard to kailan daw po yung magiging start ng um, pediatric uh, vaccination. Uh, 
ang vaccine tester po nag-uusap na no how they can operationalize this kasi may mga prerequisites tayo para makapagbakuna po tayo ng mga batang may comorbidities. Unang-una na kailangan may medical clearance po ang ating mga children na may comorbidities either from their attending physicians or their specialist o kung wala po silang access sa ganitong clearance, maari naman po yung doktor lang, yung doktor natin dun sa kanilang local area pero magbibigay po tayo ng checklist. Ano ang mga kailangang tignan sa bawat kondisyon na ilalabas po natin. And this will be provided by the Philippine, uh, the Pediatric uh, Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines para po tayo ay matulungan dito. Pangalawa, kailangan din po ng informed consent at saka assent. So kailangan yung magulang makakapag-consent yung sa gagawin sa bata at yung mismong bata ay makakapag-assent, no? yung bibigyan ng bakuna. So pangatlo, kailangan din po natin na may guardian sila kapag pupunta sila doon sa bakunahan. So kailangan meron hong sila kahit isa o dalawa yung mga magulang nila o kung sino man yung nag-aalaga sa kanila sa kanilang buhay, yun ay kasama nila. So these are the things that we need before we can be able to, we need to assure this process bago po natin maipalabas, no? bago po natin umpisahan. Kaya ang sinasabi po ng vaccine cluster, maaring mag-umpisa sa October 15. And sabi nila, baka uumpisahan muna sa isang rehiyon kung saan in place naman po talaga dito sa NCR kasi in place yung ating mga proseso na ganito and then we can then rule it out to the other region. So ganun po yung ating tinitignan through our vaccine cluster and we will be issuing guidelines soon. Uh, thank you, Yusek from Red Mendoza. Hindi raw po reflective sa nangyari sa ground yung data ng DOH uh, regarding hospital util utilization as some hospitals are still experiencing full capacity. Uh, well, uh, nakukuha naman po natin itong mga datos na ito. No? So, yun pong mga datos na meron tayo, full capacity, yun din naman po yung nakatala dun sa ating mga case data for hospitals. Ang problema minsan, hindi nakakapag-update ang ating mga ospital doon sa submission. If you remember, we get our data through our data collect. All hospitals, public, private, national, local, nagtatala po ng mga datos dito po sa ating data collect na ito. Kung saan, araw-araw uh, silang nagtatala. They are required to submit these reports every day para po atin ma-update. Noon amin pong binalikan, nag-analyze din po kami kasama ng ating mga data analytics team, nakita natin that some hospitals, they do not update no, yung kanilang ibinibigay na mga datos daily. no, Kasi daily natin kinukuha para nakakapagtala tayo. So we were able to inform these hospitals already so that we can get that cooperation, so that compliance will be proper or 100% so that we can get the actual picture on the ground. Another thing na sinasabi rin naman po ng ating mga healthcare workers, especially yung ating mga doctors, hindi natin nare-reflect yung emergency room doon sa ating healthcare utilization. At isa po yan sa aming pinag-aaralan ngayon, nakapag-consulta na po kami sa mga ospital, sa ating mga eksperto, meron na po tayong na-identify na or na-shortlist na mga indicators na pwede nating isama para nare-reflect din po kung paano napupuno ang ating mga emergency rooms which can serve also as a safe flag dito po sa atin that the healthcare system or the healthcare capacity is uh, increasing no uh, o nagkakaroon ng pagkapuno sa ating mga ospital with these emergency room indicators so these are all being studied we're trying to improve on our metrics para mas maging reflective apparently according to the those who are observing na ganito uh, atin pong inaayos uh, tayo po ay laging may room for improvement, lalong-lalo na po kung talagang on the ground ang, ang mga rekomendasyon na sila po nakakaranas doon po sa mga kasong ito na pumapasok sa ospital. Thank you, ma'am. From last question po from Rafael Busano, can the DOH explain why even if a decline in cases is being observed, hospital utilization, um, especially ICU, continues to be high? Precisely, Rafi, no? Uh, pag tinignan natin, uh, kaya nga sabi namin, huwag tayong maging complacent, tignan muna natin. Kasi hanggang sa ngayon, ang atin pong healthcare utilization ay mataas pa rin. We have 94 areas in the alert level 4, kung saan ang ibig sabihin yan, more than 70% ang utilization ng ICU nila. Wala po tayong area na nasa alert level 1. Ang ating alert level 2 ay less than 10 areas lang 
alert level 3 ay nasa mga 20 plus. So pag tinignan ho natin, talagang yung healthcare utilization natin, mataas pa rin po ang paggamit. So kaya nga gusto nating pag-aralan pa, ayaw ho naming kumpirmahin, ayaw po naming ibigay na talagang sinasabi na bumababa na ang mga kaso. Although nakikita natin na talagang merong pagbaba, pero marami ho kasing factors na nakaka-affect. That's why we'd like to complete our analysis first before we give it to the public as information which is definite already and we can already use it as part of decision. So ngayon po hindi pa namin masasabi na accurate na bumababa because of all of these factors that we are observing. Katulad ng sinasabi mo Rafi na hanggang sa ngayon mataas pa rin ang utilization sa ospital. Maraming salamat po, Yusek. Before we officially end our media forum, do you have any other final messages to our media partners and of course to the public viewing us right now? Uh, yes, Sinsay. No? So unang-una, maraming salamat po sa inyo. Alam po namin, uh, kaagapay po namin kayo sa pagpapakalap ng tamang informasyon sa ating mga kababayan. Kasabay po ng ating pagbabakuna kontra COVID-19, ay mas paglalo pa nating pag-igtingin ng minimum public health standards upang masiguro po natin na sapat ang proteksyon at kaligtasan natin at ng ating mga mahal sa buhay. <clears throat> Mahalaga rin po na ang bawat kilos natin, mapag-isipan natin, na gusto po natin ang iba yung ingat sa ngayon. Marami na pong buhay ang nawawala dahil po sa sakit na ito. Marami na po tayo mga kababayan ang nauuspital. Marami na rin po tayo mga kababayan na nagkakasakit at hindi makapagtrabaho dahil sa sakit na ito. So alam po natin, meron naman po tayong mga armas, meron naman po tayong pwedeng magawa para pigilan ng infeksyon. Tayo po ay magtulong-tulong. Sundin po natin ang mga safety protocols, sundin po natin ang mga sinasabi ng ating mga health experts, magpabakuna na po tayo kung ito po ay uh, schedule nyo na para po maibsan na po natin ang mga infeksyon dito sa ating bansa. So yun lamang po. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat and we will see you on Friday. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you very much, Yusek. Maraming salamat sa ating media partners. Stay safe po.